Indy Athletics has major NIL potential and could be a difference maker. And Mark Byington adds a lot of experience to his staff. Get excited about that. Let's go. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Today, we're going to discuss, today I'm going to discuss what Vandy's NIL potential means for future success in athletics, especially in the big three. Also, what is football's most meaningful game in 2024? Is it Virginia Tech? Is it Kentucky? South Carolina? Alabama? Which one is it? Lastly, uh, certainly not leastly, Mark Byington has added a ton of major college basketball experience to his staff. We'll discuss what that means exactly for the future of Vandy men's basketball. So thanks for making Locked on Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So happy Friday. We're going to get you into the weekend here with uh, with a really, really good show. We're going to talk a little NIL. And I was kind of going through some things, and um, I got asked on uh, the last episode, yesterday's episode, why – I think Vandy's going to go bowling. And one of the things I mentioned, and this kind of sparked a little bit of a, uh, this kind of sparked a little bit of a thought, but like getting involved in NIL was, was one of the things that led Vandy to uh, have a ton of potential uh, for, for success. And so with them leaning heavily into it, I mean, you, you started to see it with football. They've accepted some transfers and some, some fairly big name transfers as, as much as Vandy can get after going two and 10. Um, but you have also basketball um, looks to, you know, with, with the changes they've made, they're going to invest in IL wise They're you know, the collectives and the, some of the businesses and donors and boosters are going to give more to the NIL pot and baseball has taken advantage of it too uh, with some of their transfers and some of their big name guys as well. So like you're starting to see yield success in baseball, who was the first to really kind of jump in um, to NIL at Vandy um, football didn't really participate in it too much. I think that's probably why uh, a lot of guys transferred because they didn't know uh, if Vandy was going to jump into the NIL game. They didn't know what potential there was and they saw opportunity elsewhere, and they went and took it. Certainly don't blame them, but I think I think that happening and seeing basketball not participate and go almost winless in the conference, I think you, you saw it was almost like a wake-up call for the AD. It was almost like a wake-up call for um, the athletic department in uh, trying to – they just they wanted to get involved. They want to have success, and they want to um, attract big names. And I, I don't think they would have gotten a coach quite the caliber of Mark Byington had they not committed to NIL. I don't think that they get some of the some of the coaches in football, some of the assistant guys in football, without saying, "Okay, we're bringing you in," because you go two and ten in the SEC, and you're essentially your seat's red hot. And that's part of one of the reasons why I think, and I think NIL is a huge reason why uh, some of these coaches wanted to come on board because they see the potential. Like if Vanderbilt kind of really leans into NIL, they can start to kind of do something that they've never done before success wise. Like, like they could be more of like the James Franklin era Commodores and they can experience that same success. Attracting good players, getting better facilities, uh, getting better coaches, getting better everything. And they have vastly upgraded their entire staff. And they've gotten guys that I don't think they would have gotten had they not really made that pledge to really kind of dive in further uh, into NIL the way they did. Because I don't think Jerry Kill, Tim Beck, uh, Coach Langford, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think those guys, um, and all the assistance we got, uh, Coach Steiner and the weight training, um, I, I don't think that those guys invest. I don't think those guys jump in to a 2-10 and 10 program if they know, okay, this thing, they're not doing anything to improve. 
They're not doing anything to get to improve their player acquisition. They're not doing anything to enhance their facilities. I don't think that those guys come over, and I think you're scraping bottom of the barrel uh, for for coaches who just need an opportunity because they're out on their rear end. So um, I, I don't think you attract those type of, type of guys. And to get a guy like Nate Johnson to come over from Utah, I think he could have gone a number of places. Uh, Diego Pavia coming over, like I, I think he, you know, I think winning wise, he probably would have been better off staying in uh, in New Mexico uh, if if Fandy didn't kind of show that they were uh, improving in NIL. I, I think it was delayed. I think they missed out on a lot of the big guys because it was kind of delayed in what they wanted to show. They needed to hire an offensive coordinator, so I think there were some things in play where they rolled out things strategically. So. Um, you know, I don't think you attract those type of type of people if you're not bought in. Same with basketball. Like I think there were some big names considering it because A, there was a big NIL package already kind of committed, and B, with the potential that Nashville offers with the music business, the uh, the medical business, uh, the medical field, um, and and just kind of everything with Nashville being one of the fastest growing cities in America. There's a ton of potential there, and there's a ton of, of things happening that, you know, they can say, all right, well, Nashville is an up-and-coming place. Vanderbilt's not going to be the same. There's going to be some great NIL potential here. If I go, I can be this. I can be Big Fish Little Pond, get a good NIL pot, and now we're off and running. So, um, you know, I, I think this could be a potential – game changer like I, I don't I, I don't think you're going to see the same Vandy that you always see now this year it might take a you know there might be like an adjustment period but I, I think you're going to see some some better stuff happening when this new stadium is done that's going to help that's going to help bring in donors that may be what gets the uh, you know home fans Vandy fans pack in the place instead of instead of visiting fans. So, you know, with with baseball, NIL allows those guys that are on the fence, like if you have really good NIL potential and there's a potential for big deals or big money, relatively speaking, for the sport of college baseball, I think if you can kind of do a little bit better than they would uh, with an with a MLB contract where they're kicking around in single A ball, double A ball for a few years making pennies on the dollar when they could when they could be making quarters on the dollar at Vanderbilt, but it's an improvement. So you, you get some of these guys that are on the fringe, like first rounders are gone. Second rounders probably gone, but anything like third round and below, if you can match some of that stuff that they would be making, you might have a chance of getting that, that type of talent to your school and you have them for three years and you can take advantage of it before they, elevate their draft stock and they go back into the MLB draft and, and, you know, hopefully, you know, those fourth rounders turn into first rounders uh, in Tim Corbin's system. So like, that's the kind of thing that happens with football, with baseball, with football, you get some of those recruits that, you know, might go, you know, there might be some like big 12 schools, big 10 schools, ACC schools that are recruiting them. But if you can get that SEC, Nashville NIL money, they might they might not go to Virginia and they might come to you. They might not go to Illinois. They might come to you. They might not go like I don't think you're gonna beat out Ohio State for a lot of recruits or any recruits, maybe. You're not gonna beat out Georgia, Texas, Bama, Florida, you know, not gonna beat a whole lot of those schools out, at least right now. But like you can start beating out some mid tier schools, whereas Vandy was beating out some group of five schools for kids before this. So like that's an improvement. So if you can start competing with the Illinois, the Purdue's, the Iowa's, the uh, Baylor's, the Texas Tech's, the the Cal's, the Arizona's of the world, you know where you haven't been competing with those caliber schools before in recruiting, I think NIL gives you a chance to compete with that, and the potential is there to really kind of make a boom in it. If Vandy will go full, full in, and it looks like they are, it looks like they want to. And I think they've gone a little bit of the way in now they've committed a good deal. And I think if they, I think if football wins a bowl game, basketball makes some sort of postseason tournament, 
and baseball goes to Omaha, I think you'll see, uh, I think there's potential for floodgates opening and, and with, with a city like Nashville, it's there. Like if, if you look at some of the, the hot pot, like why is Texas getting a ton of kids? Well, Austin has a lot of, a lot of NIL, uh, stuff. UCLA, US, USC, they've got LA. They're doing really well. Um, you know, Georgia Tech hasn't done hasn't bought into that yet, but like Miami probably gets a lot because of because of the city of Miami. Um, you know, you can you can get some of these major cities. Like I could see in a few years if if, South, if University of South Florida gets their you know what together, like City of Tampa could provide some some opportunity as well. Like there there's some schools out there that have they just haven't tapped into it yet. But like I think Vandy's starting to discover, hey, we're in the fastest growing city in America. Um, Nashville is booming right now and and so you know condos are going up every single day they're uh, nashville's going to host a super bowl pretty soon when, when the new titan stadium opens they've hosted a draft probably on probably in line to host another nfl draft here pretty soon uh they're looking to get a major league baseball team so like things are happening in this city and with those things that are happening there's potential for money to surface and vandy alum to be part of that money and, feed, and funnel in because think about it if you can make good nil money and get a vandy degree why would you not go nil has been holding them back now it's not now it, now it can't be a barrier now it's not a barrier there's potential for it to not be a barrier so uh it, very exciting stuff happening with nil so kind of stay tuned over the next year or two and just kind of see how it all develops, see how football does with, with their increased involvement in IL, see what happens with Mark Byington and basketball, which we'll talk more about Mark Byington here uh, in a little bit, but uh, you know, it's going to be going to be fun, but um, for Vandy, they've got to prove it. So what's going to be that game? What's going to be that meaningful game that, you know, okay, Vandy's here or what what's the game they need to really kind of focus on. We'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. All right. We are presented by Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Quarter one, 2004, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Invest, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SBI, SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. All right, welcome back to segment number two. But first, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all of that shouting? We'll make the switch to Locked On Sports today. You can find it right here on my channel, actually. Uh, A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, um. We asked, what is the most meaningful game in 2024? Uh, you know, I think the answer, I think there's an obvious answer here, and it's Virginia Tech. It's the Virginia Tech game. And uh, why is that the answer? Because it's the first game. And to be honest, I, you know, you could break down, I could break down Virginia Tech all I want. And when we get to know your enemy, we will. But to me, the first game is going to set the tone for the season. That game's in Nashville. It's at home. And 
you get a legitimate preseason top 25 opponent, uh, Virginia Tech returns a lot of players. And so I think if you can go out and get a win against Virginia Tech, that's going to set the tone really, really well for the season because you're going to be three and because you get a win against Virginia Tech, you're going to, your confidence is going to be riding high. You got Alcorn State and Georgia State. Uh, the next two games, and then you got Alabama. So um, you're going to be rolling to Alabama three and zero. Not saying they're going to roll into Alabama and roll out with a with a win, but um, I, I think it's I think this could springboard your way into a six seven win season, getting yourself to a bowl game. Because I, I think if you get a team as talented as as Vanderbilt is, and I think overall they're more talented now than they were a year ago, despite losing three star receivers. I don't think they had a ton of talent outside of that. Um, but you get, you know, as, as we're breaking down the roster and as we're breaking down uh, different positions, you've got across the board, I think you've got some really good talent in some role-playing positions. Like, I, I think you got some guys that fit specific needs. And and to get those guys going, to get those guys some confidence – those guys start doing their job really, really well. And if you can get that first win, that sets the tone for the season that, hey, we can actually do this. And they start buying into Coach Lee's system. They start buying into Coach Beck's system. You, the, the, the receivers start running routes a little harder. They stay healthier, which – They've had a better strength and conditioning program, which they haven't had a full off season of it yet. Um, uh, that'll be 2025. We'll see. We'll really reap the benefits of, of Coach Steiner's program, or we'll see the downfall um, if it doesn't work out. But nonetheless, we're not going to get a full judgment until 2025. But, you know, I, I think when you're winning, when you have confidence, you stay healthier longer. Um, I, I think guys fit into roles. There's confidence. There's depth. Practices are better. There's more juice around the program. Fans start to enter. Um, you know, I, I think fans start to make their way, even though even though it's a freaking quagmire to get into uh, Vanderbilt Stadium right now with all the construction. Um, they can get excited about what's what's happening because structurally – there's going to be more things. There's going to be more structure up this coming season than there was last season. Last season, it looked kind of pitiful. But this season, there's going to be more structurally that's put up uh, so that fans can really get a glimpse of, okay, this is what we can get excited for because they can kind of see the vastness of what it's going to be and they can kind of visualize it. With a win against Virginia Tech, it gets them more excited about that. With the win against Virginia Tech, your defense starts flying around a lot more. You start to get a lot more active. You start to get better communication. Clark Lee is more involved, right? Jerry Kill is – he's going to be a big part of it. Uh, I don't know what what uh, winning the first game does for him, but um, – you know, but it's uh, it's good to have him nonetheless. But you know, you just guys just start playing harder. There's more confidence, and with more confidence, you get to take advantage of games like Kentucky, South Carolina, Auburn, whose team they, they might be down and out. Like Auburn, if they don't go ten and zero, their fan base is going to beat them down. So if you come in, if, if a confident Vandy team comes down to the plains and beats Auburn, it's going to get really loud down there, right? You have a South Carolina team that's going to be beaten down. Um, that's going to be awesome. So you set the tone for all of that. You set yourself up for success in games like that. Kentucky is looking for an identity. They don't have one. They have some. They have some talented dudes, but they just don't really have an identity, especially offensively. So you have a chance to take advantage of that, and you get them relatively early versus South Carolina. So I think Virginia Tech is probably the most meaningful game. I think the next one, if that one goes well, I think as a result of a win against Virginia Tech, which is possible, I think you get to roll into South Carolina with a chance to get your seventh win. Because I think if you beat Virginia Tech, I think that sets you up for a six, seven win season. And you roll into South Carolina with that chance at win number seven. And if South Carolina is downtrodden and you owe them a butt kicking, that game could really kind of set off, okay, this overhaul worked, man. Like you could walk out of that South Carolina game and go, this ain't the same Vandy team. Like this is this is outstanding. And, you know, they're just balling right now. And 
that could that could ha- that could result in a in a downward spiral for the so- a South Carolina program. So those games, like those first games, matter. Like if you go three and zero, that matters, right? That's confidence. If you can play well against Bama, I, I just don't think they're going to beat Bama. I could be wrong, but I, I just don't see it happening because Bama's Bama and Virginia and uh, Virginia Tech, uh, Vandy. They were two and ten last year. They're not quite up to speed with talent as compared to Bama. But if you have a good showing and you play really well and really hard against Bama, that breeds confidence. Same with Texas. Um, you play a really good game against Texas, that breeds confidence. And you get to your last two games, which is LSU and Tennessee. Um, you have a chance to compete in those games. Anything can happen against Tennessee. LSU, that's a tough place to win, especially in Baton Rouge. But you give yourself a chance because what if they've turned on on Brian Kelly? It doesn't matter. That helmet, you beat if you're Vandy, it doesn't matter if they're down or not. If you beat LSU as Vandy, you beat LSU. It doesn't matter. So those games can really, really set the tone. So anyway, speaking of set, speaking of setting the tone, Mark Byington is really setting the tone for some success in basketball by uh, if you've seen his staff that he's that he's assembled if you're not excited you just don't really like the sport of basketball so um, get excited about this one all right have you ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience well I know I have and if you say you haven't you probably never bought tickets before but um Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So, the things I love is you can pick out specific games or, uh, or matchups that you'd love to attend. Um, so, you can be selective about it. And, uh, you know, you can look at all the good deals. So um, one of my favorite features is this. Um, I love the uh, the customize your spot. Um, I, I love being able to see the view from the seat. And uh, I think the zone deals are cool because, like, picking a seat can be just kind of tedious. So you just go, okay, I want to be in section 210. You pick the seats. I'm all good. And you get the discount because of that. So I love it. But uh, anyway, customize your spot, man. Um, you get priority last priority last minute deals. So you can save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater, etc. Flash deals. You can save even more with exclusive in app deals <clears throat> on select seats ahead of the game or event. You have zone deals, which I just said. You save even more when you choose the section and let game time choose the seats. Um, would you have all in prices? So toggling this feature shows you the total up front. So you're doing yourself a disservice disservice if you don't allow yourself to see that total up front. So you have no surprise fees at checkout. What that price says is what you're going to pay. Um, I love the panoramic view you get from your seat in the app before you buy. That's a really cool feature, and it doesn't matter to the stadium. I kind of I kind of tested this out. Uh, I did Geodis Park, I did uh, Comerica Park, and I did I think. Levi Stadium, it's uh, it's awesome. Every time worked every time. Uh, not like uh, not like Brian Fantano where it says sixty percent of the time it works every time. So you get the lowest price guarantee. Um, that's also cool. Game time will credit you one hundred ten percent of the difference. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College. It's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, welcome in. We're wrapping the show. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. Uh, make sure you make Locked On SEC your next listen every day. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, there. So uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you listening. So. Um, Follow us, follow along on social media at Locked on Vandy. 
And thank you to the everydayers. Of course, you guys are awesome. 240 subscriptions before before May. Let's make that happen. Let's get to 250 before the end of the before the end of the month. Let's get to 300 before the end of the month. And then when Vandy makes the College World Series, we'll get to 500 by the time they enter the College World Series. And then when they win it, we'll get to 1,000. And then football season rolls around, we'll be at 1,000 and we'll be monetized. And then we'll be doing some cool stuff. So, um, so yeah. It's going to be awesome. And so... Um, So thanks for making that happen. Last segment, we're going to talk about Mark Byington, and we're going to discuss what uh, we're going to discuss what he brings to the table, what he means to the show, and all of that stuff. And uh, it's going to be awesome, dude. He is the staff that he is hiring is absolutely outstanding. So you have uh, Xavier Joyner, John Crimmins, Matt Buckland. They're all coming to him from. They're all coming with him from JMU, from James Madison. He also had some guys. Uh, they uh, they they hired he hired two vet, uh, veterans. One worked at Colorado, Ricky Ray and Tom Ostrom at Drake. So I I think you're uh, what this says is that like he is ready to just completely pop off, and he is ready to uh, he's ready to roll, man. And this is going to be. Really, really cool, and this is going to be something that he uh, he goes into going. All right, we're uh, we're ready for success. We're ready to launch this thing. These guys are recruiting really well. They know his, the guys coming with them from JMU know his system, so they can help implement it. They can help buy in. They can help recruits. Some of these young guys can go out there and, and really kind of pound the pavement. You got some veteran guys that have a lot of experience in college basketball that can really do a lot of cool things. So uh, I'm excited about all of this stuff. I'm excited about all the hires and things like that. So this this should be no surprise that. Uh, that he did this. This should be no surprise that um, because he's coming ready to roll. He is, he's just outstanding, man. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. And this is pretty cool what he's doing. So uh, I'm excited about it. I think you should be excited about it too. So uh, I love it, man. And to me, Mark Byington, is hitting home run after home run. You hear him in his media appearances. He talks about his staff, how, how important they're going to be. So he, he gives those guys the credit they get. Uh, you talk, you, you hear him talk energy wise. The players seem to be excited. Uh, the fans seem really excited. I, I think everyone, I think at first, like people thought, okay, this is, you know, who is this Mark Byington guy? And I don't think they were ready for, People just didn't know much about him. And when they heard him talk, when they heard some of the appearances that he had, when he heard things, how things were going, you know, he he really kind of hit a home run there with uh, – with, uh, what am I trying to say? He really hit a home run with his hires. And so I, I think it's something that you can, uh, you can look forward to. It's like, okay, he's got a great staff. They're going to recruit well. He's got the NIL, the aforementioned NIL. And he's he's gonna he's really gonna crush it, and this is gonna be a lot of fun. So, uh, get excited about that, and get excited about Vandy basketball because I think there's a, the potentials there to, uh, to 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 blow the lid off of Memorial Gym and bring back what Memorial Gym actually is supposed to be—a terrifying experience for visiting fans. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. And so, I you know, if you're a season ticket holder, you should you should renew, and you should be excited about. What this uh, what this brings to uh, to Vanderbilt. So uh, get excited about that. But we're gonna we're gonna take off. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna send you off into the weekend with a bang. Um, Vandy is playing uh, LSU this weekend, baseball wise. So get excited about that. And uh, hopefully that we'll we'll talk more baseball uh, in in the in the very near future. We'll we'll recap on Monday Monday's episode. We'll recap the the series. And we'll uh, we'll go into depth about that and uh, much much more. But thank you for making Lockdown Vandy your first listen. Thank you to the everydayers. We really really appreciate you. So, uh, without further ado, have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday on the Lockdown Vandy Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Peace.
and anchor down.